precious one. And you're welcome. This is the Yashua Artist Drockers, a young prophet, Ezekiel Mekisele, coming your way live from the Salvation Christian Church Worldwide, being located right in Ghana, Accra. And I want you to understand that God has a message for your life that will change your life forever. So I want you to sit down and lock your seat because God will speak to you right in this place. You know the book of Psalm 119 verse 11? The Bible says, Your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. So when you hide God's word in your heart, it has the capacity to deliver you from the power of sin. You know that the doorway to the human soul is the heart. The only place that God can enter is the heart. In the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 20, the Bible says, Behold, I stand at the door knocking. If anyone will listen to my voice and open the door, I will come in and sup with him and he will sup with me. So Jesus is knocking at the door. What door is he talking about? The door is your heart. The doorway to the human soul, like I said, is your heart. So Jesus wants to come into your life, but he's knocking with his word. When you hear the word of God like this, it's a sign that Jesus is knocking. You want to come into your life. You want to change your story. You know, I bet you God has a message that can change you forever. So sit down and listen to the word. You can contact us right on the number showing on your screen. And we'll pray for you with all your prayer requests and everything. And if you're seeking for information and direction as to how to visit us, you can see everything right on the screen. When you call us for more information, you get it. And I believe that God will speak to your soul. He will bless your life. So sit down. I'll be coming back to pray with you right after the message. Don't go. Hallelujah. Jesus did everything right. He lived a righteous life. He never killed, he never stole, he never committed adultery, he never lived in fornication. That shows that he is a good shepherd. He did not deceive people, he did not cheat people. That shows that he is a good shepherd. So, verse 3, he said to him, the porter opened and the sheep hear his voice. And he called up his own sheep by name and he lived them out. He is the shepherd of life. So, he calls his people by name. That is specification. It is not by accident that you are a Christian. You are selected to be. You are elected by God, by the grace. He called you by your name. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. God knows every one of us by our own name. That means there is a book of in heaven written concerning you. Mm -hmm. There is a book of life. The moment you give your life to Christ, your name must be known by Christ. And he has to write your name there. When we go to heaven, we are going to use heaven's register. Amen. That is what God will use to assess you before you even enter heaven. If your name is not found there, you can be there. Hallelujah. Amen. Heaven is not like a uh, because my sister is there, you invite me to come there. Or because my brother is there, you invite me to come there. Or because my mother is there, you invite me to come there. You can't, you can't go and visit your father in heaven. If you happen to be in hell, you cannot visit your sister in heaven. If you happen to be in hell. So there is a life you live. There are things you do that... You must understand that this world is not all that there is because our decisions in life must be guided by the good shepherd, the shepherd of life. He calls us by name so that he will lead us on the path of righteousness because he has something for us to do. He has a plan, he has a blessing, he has a glory. So he mentions our name spiritually even to the Father there is a place where our names are recommended to God. God tells the Father, He said, This one belongs to me, this one belongs to me. And He doesn't use the word this one. He does not use this one to refer to us. But we are not animals, we are souls. Amen. When you have so many sheep, you cannot name all your sheep. If you have so many goats, you can't give name to all the goats you have. Your chicken, if you have a potter farm, all oh, the fowls there, you cannot give names to them. But God has human beings, multitudes, yet everyone has his name. That is identity. It is important because you are going to represent your name. 
whatever you do, it will bear your name. So be in your name. Nobody will answer for you. You will answer for yourself. So animals, their owners can answer for them. If a dog bites somebody, they cannot arrest the dog, but they will arrest the owner. That's the difference. But if a human being bites somebody, they cannot arrest the mother or the father. They will arrest the person because it's a responsible soul. That is what it is. That's why you, you carry your name. That's why they give you a name. They want to tell you that you are responsible for the things you do in life. You are responsible for your words. You are responsible for your actions. Nobody will bear the responsibility or take the repercussions of your actions. That's why if you are doing things, you have to be careful. So, the Good Shepherd wants to lead us in such a way that we will live a life that will give us eternal life because he's the shepherd of life. He leads us to a place of life. The devil can be a shepherd, but he's a shepherd of death. There are some people that Satan is misleading. The devil is telling them the course of action they should take. And when Satan is misleading you, you decide anyhow. But if you are led by the Spirit of God, you have God's word in you, and your life is dictated to by the word of God. You are directed by God's word. You are instructed by the word. The word of the Lord tells you what to do and you do it. The word of the Lord tells you where to go and you go. The word of the Lord tells you the right life you live and you live. So when the shepherd of life is in your life, it guides your steps. It's not every place you can go. You no, 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 because you are following him. Verse 4, he said, when he put them for his own sheep, he go up before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. You get it? So, if Jesus is your shepherd, you have this shepherd of life, you follow his voice. You follow his leading. You don't just do anything. No. You don't just decide to live the life you choose, and then you live it and have your own way. You do what Jesus wants you to do. It's a submissive life. You don't just sit down, calculate, and plan. You do it this way, have it this way, do it this way, do it this way. No, no, no. When you give your life to Christ, you don't imitate sinners. You don't follow worldly people. Because to them, all their riches in this world is the one they are seeing. But to us, we know that there is more to life. We have eternity. Awaiting us. We have heaven awaiting us. We have God's kingdom awaiting us. We have mountains in heaven. We have a place of eternal abode. Because God's word tells us so. That is why we follow the shepherd of life. So that you lead us there. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. If you don't follow the shepherd of life, you take decisions in life anyhow. You can follow the footsteps of your mother. Or you follow the footsteps of your father. So that people will call you like mother, like daughter. Or like father, like son. I don't know whether you like that name. Jeez. You want to be called like mother, like daughter. Or like father, like son. I believe that you, have, you need to have a new name. You need to be described by Jesus. Because you are following Jesus. That makes us Christians. You know, the Bible says that the first time they called the disciples Christians, Jesus did not call them Christians. No, he didn't call them Christians. He called them my disciples. But people named them Christians. And they named them after Christ. Meaning their character is like that of Christ. And so they are Christians. If you're Ghana, you're from Ghana, you're called Ghanaian. If you're from America, you're called American. So if you're from Christ, you're called Christian. Amen. Isn't it wonderful to be called Christian? But if you're called Christian and you don't live the life of Christ, Satan controls you. 
That means you have not submitted to the shepherd of life. You need to know the essence of Jesus being your shepherd because he is going to be a light for you. He will lead you to the place of life. He will lead you to the place of glory. When you don't know the end of the road, he knows the end of the road. When you don't know what might happen tomorrow, God knows what will happen tomorrow. And he's sure to lead you successfully because he knows the road. He can see far ahead of it. He knows the road, the road of life. So he can tell you, don't pass through this place, pass here. This place is a place of death, it's a place of disaster, it's a place of oppression. Don't pass there, pass here. This is life for you. You need that kind of life. Hallelujah. Amen. We need to understand these things because Jesus came to give us life. The God kind of life. A life that money cannot buy. A life that your mother couldn't give you. A life that your father couldn't give you. It's only Jesus that can give you that life. That's his eternal life. The abundant life. Jesus said it right here. In verse 10, he says, The thief cometh not, John 10 10, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. And come that they might have life, that they might have it more abundantly. That is why he is the shepherd of life. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. He comes to give you life, abundant life, the super flowing life. Life is surplus. Not a scanty life, not a small life, not a short life, not a life of sickness, not a life of pain, not a life full of misery. It's abundant life in every area you enjoy life. When we talk about life, life means you are active, you are functioning. Life means you are living. You are active, functional being. You are not dormant. You are not inactive. You are vibrating. You are moving. You are working to and fro. You are going to and fro. You can breathe and respond to stimuli. You can respond to life situations. You can respond to the word of God. You can respond to the things of God. You can respond to the attack of the enemy. You can fight the battles of life. You have life in you. You can stand on your feet, work by your own, do things by yourself, and receive God's grace and favor. That is life. Mm -hmm. Anything that is dead, if you don't know life, consider death. Death will make you appreciate life. Praise the Lord, precious one. You're welcome. I believe that the word of the Lord changed your life. That message you heard was a timely message. It is just meant for you. I mean, you especially. You see, God's word is programmed for your life. The word of God is the spirit. In John chapter 6, verse 63, Jesus said, the flesh profits nothing. It's the spirit that gives life. And the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and the life. So God's word came to give you life right now. And I want you to receive the word in your heart because when you do that, it gives you a transformation, a change of life. God's word is meant to transform your life and make you the kind of person that God created you to be. When the word of the Lord changes you, you become who God wants you to be. Don't settle down for anything lesser than the person that God created you to be. And this can happen right when you take step by step approach to the word of God because God's word came to accomplish something in your life. In Isaiah chapter 55 verse 10 to verse 11, the Bible says, My word shall not return unto me void, but shall accomplish the purpose for which I sent it and that which I please. So God's word came to accomplish something in your life. And I believe that that word can change your story. It can change your life forever. So I want to pray with you based on the word of God because God wants to change your life from a non-entity to some entity. God wants to change your life from nobody to somebody because God has a plan for your life. He wants to elevate you. His word says, you shall be the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath. If you believe that, you need to give your life to Jesus first of all. I want to pray with you right now. And I believe that God is going to touch your life. Now, if you want to give your life to Jesus for the first time, just say these prayers after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for your word that you have spoken to me. 
I receive your word. Forgive my sins and wash me with the blood. From today, write my name in the book of life. For I give my life to you now. In Jesus' name, wash me with your blood and accept me in your kingdom. I thank you, Lord. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer, I believe that God has ministered to you. Now, I want to speak into your destiny. May God bless your life and change your destiny. May God heal your diseases. May God deliver your bones and your flesh. May God open business doors for you. Financial doors be open for you. May his countenance shine on you. This day, may you hear good news. May you see a good thing. May the Lord open new doors for you. May you make a progress in everything that you do and say, the hand of the Lord visit you. The power of God go with you. The grace of the Lord be with you. In Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah. You are blessed. So, I want you to understand that God always have a way for you so look at it a day with us and then just tune into the station and i believe that the same time next week you will be blessed more even more because god has a word for your life he's still speaking god be with you thank you lord jesus christ